Hey, praise the Lord. Greetings and peace to you all once again in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is I, Brother Clinton, and you're back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. Let's talk about John 3, 5. Jesus said unto Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. This is a very controversial passage of the scripture, not in the church of Jesus Christ, but among religious people, because, well, as at any time when someone is trying to put out a flame, the, the place that they would aim the fire extinguisher would be at the base of the flame. And this is at the base of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that is the reason that there are so many people that misunderstand this verse of the scripture and it's because of the religious teachings that they've been exposed to in whatever religious denomination they've been a part of so let's just talk about it for a moment it's really a very simple statement jesus was talking to nicodemus a ruler of the jews and nicodemus came to jesus by night and said master we know that thou art a teacher come from god because no man can do these miracles that thou doest except god be with him and so Jesus recognized by that statement that Nicodemus could see something that the other Pharisees were not seeing because the other Pharisees didn't say that to him. They said he had a devil, that he was beside himself, that he was a Samaritan, which is a terrible slander to speak to a Jewish man, especially a rabbi. Um, and so Jesus realized that Nicodemus could see something and what he could see was the kingdom of God. And so Jesus said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Jesus was telling Nicodemus that if he hadn't had revelation from God of the things that he was bearing witness to, that he wouldn't have been able to see those things. But Nicodemus didn't understand why Jesus said that. All Nicodemus heard was things concerning the flesh, or I should say all Nicodemus could think of was things concerning the flesh. So he heard Jesus talk about being born again. So he said, well, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And so Jesus, going along with what Nicodemus said to answer his question, said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. You see, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews, and Nicodemus knew that Moses had led the children of Israel out of Egypt, and by the leading of God, they wound up between the Red Sea and the Egyptian army. And God had led them there on purpose, so that he could show forth his mighty power. So you see, God knew all along that he was going to open the Red Sea. Moses didn't know, and the people that were with Moses didn't know, but God knew. And so he brought them there on purpose. Why did God bring them there on purpose? Well, for several reasons. One, so that he could show his mighty power. Two, so that he could redeem his people and destroy Egypt in the same water that he saved Israel through. And three, so that they could be born of water. Because they passed through the sea. And Paul said, Paul the Apostle of Christ said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. The cloud being the pillar of cloud, which was the apparition of the angel of the Lord. You see, so they were born of water and of the Spirit. And the same thing happened to the people of Israel 40 years later when they entered into the Promised Land and they went across the Jordan River. God caused the waters of the river to stop and the people walked through on dry ground when the priests entered into the midst of the river bearing the Ark of the Covenant. And what happened after they passed through the water? On the other side of the river at Gilgal, they were circumcised. The circumcision of Christ is the covenant. So again, water and spirit. Water and Spirit. This is typed out throughout the whole entire New Testament. In Leviticus chapter 14, we have the ritual that God commanded the priests, or the, I shouldn't say the ritual, the sacrifice or the gift that, the God, that God commanded the priests to offer when what? When a leper was cleansed. 
And what was the gift or the sacrifice that the priests were to offer when, the, when there was a leper who was cleansed? This is why Jesus, when he cleansed one of the lepers, he said, go and show yourself unto the priests and command them to, or pardon me, and to tell them to offer the commandment that God commanded them by Moses for a testimony unto them. What was this sacrifice or this offering that the priests made when one came to them saying he had been cleansed from leprosy? Well, first they were to examine the man to see if he had truly been cleansed from his leprosy. And if that was the case, then they would take two birds and they would kill one of the birds by wringing off its head over running water so that the blood of that bird would get into the water. And then they would take the second bird with scarlet and hyssop and cedar wood, and they would dip that bird and those things into the water with the blood of the other bird, and then they would set it free. Pardon me, then they would sprinkle the, the one that was to be cleansed seven times with the water, with the blood in it from the bird, and then they would set the bird free. Okay, if you don't see water and spirit in that, I, I don't know what to say for you, but that's exactly what happened at the Red Sea, what happened at the Jordan River, and what happened at the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and on the day of Pentecost. You see? So that's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He said this during the time of the Old Testament concerning the Jews to a ruler of the Jews. And he was talking about the whole of the revelation of the scripture from Genesis to Malachi. And Nicodemus didn't understand. And what did Jesus say to him in John 3.10? He said, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? In other words, this is like basic knowledge. How is it that you don't understand this, Nicodemus? Jesus was a rabbi of 33 years of age. A relatively young man compared to Nicodemus. And he understood, Jesus understood these things, which were foundational and, and, and basic. And Nicodemus, I'm not trying to you know, rail on Nicodemus, but he, he was an older man, but yet he still didn't understand. Why? Because he, he had been used to the teachings of the rabbis of Israel, and he had not been searching the scriptures, as he should have been. Because Jesus said, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But Nicodemus hadn't been doing that, at least not as he should have been. And so he didn't understand one of the most basic precepts of all the scripture. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So during the time of the Old Testament, the children of Israel were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And those that came out of their loins were in the loins of their fathers when they passed through the through the sea and under the cloud. Just as it is that they that paid tithes to the Levites, the Levites were yet in the loins of Abraham when Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, which was an apparition of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, not a pre-existent Christ, but a way that God appeared to Abraham as the king, Melchizedek. Melchizedek, we say, but it's Melchizedek, which means the king of righteousness and the king of Jerusalem, which is also the king of peace. And so, um, praise the Lord, that was God to whom Abraham gave tithes, and the Levites who took tithes generations later were yet in the loins of Abraham when he paid tithes to Melchizedek. And so it is that the people of Israel, during the time of the Old Testament, up until the day of, of Pentecost when the New Testament began, they were in the loins of their fathers when they passed through the sea and under the cloud. And so that's why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 and 2 that they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Baptized unto Moses. They went through the water. They didn't get wet, but they went through the water. And they went through the water on purpose because that's the way that God led them. He could have led them a different way, which would have been shorter and less dangerous, but he didn't. He led them that way on purpose. Praise the Lord. And so when the New Testament began, on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, as it was written in the law and as is recorded for us historically by Luke in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, 
the Bible says that they were all with one accord in one place, and there came a sound like as a rush of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And cloven tongues of fire sat upon each of them, and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Just like the first testament began, the first covenant began with fire on top of the mountain, on Mount Sinai, when God gave his Ten Commandments and made a covenant with his people Israel, so it is that the Second Testament, or the New Testament, began with a sign of fire upon the heads of the disciples, the 120 that were there in the upper room, waiting for the promise of the Father. Okay? So that doesn't happen every time one of us receives the Holy Ghost, but it happened the first time. Just like during the time of the Old Testament, whenever the people of, 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 of God read the Scripture in the Old Testament, there wasn't fire, but there was fire at first when God spoke to them from the top of the mountain. And so it is when the New Testament began, there was fire that appeared upon their heads. And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Lord, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so then all these Jews that are gathered around are seeing this because they're all there for the Feast of Pentecost as they were commanded by the Lord to be present in Jerusalem three times in the year. And this was one of those times. So there was devout Jews from every nation under heaven. And they were gathered together in Jerusalem because of the commandment of the Lord. And it was so that when they asked Peter and the rest of the apostles, what is this, that he began to stand up and preach unto them from the scripture, which we call the Old Testament, and to cause them to understand that that man whom they had crucified outside of the city, Jerusalem, seven weeks prior, was actually their Messiah. And when he caused them to realize this from the testimony of the scripture, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, that they were pricked in their hearts. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter, with the other eleven apostles, said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. To all those that are afar off and as many as the Lord our God shall call. And that day 3,000 souls were added unto the church. Why? Because they were commanded to be born of water and of the Spirit. You see, during the Old Testament, the people of Israel were born of water and of the Spirit when they passed through the sea and under the cloud. And that's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus didn't understand that, but he should have, because it was basic Jewish teaching. It was the basic teaching of the Scripture. And when the New Testament began, then there was a new way for Jew or Gentile to be born of water and of the Spirit. And that is to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Water baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible doesn't say to be baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It says to be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And the only name that the Bible gives us for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. That's the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's why his apostles began to preach when the New Testament began, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Because that's the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The Son of God is called Jesus Christ because that's his Father's name. And the Holy Ghost is his Father. The Bible says that when Mary became pregnant, that that which was conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. Jesus called the Holy Ghost that was in him the Father multiple times. In the, in the scripture, it's written many times. The Holy Ghost that was in Jesus, he called him the Father because that's what he is. He was his Father. Praise the Lord. And he's my Father and he's in me as well. You see, the Holy Ghost isn't a part of a trinity of gods. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And so... To be born of water and of the Spirit during the time of the Old Testament was to pass through the sea and under the cloud. 
To be born of water and of the Spirit in this time of the New Testament is to be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which is for the remission of your sins. That's how you're washed by the blood of Christ when you call upon the name of the Lord in baptism and to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which will, of course, cause you to speak with other tongues and prophesy as the Spirit gives the utterance. That's what it means to be born of water and of the Spirit. If you have thought that it meant something else, then that means that you were taught a lie, whether it was from your grandparents or your parents or your denomination or from reading a book or watching videos or whatever it might have been. It was a lie. If you have believed anything else than what I've just shown you from the Scripture, then you were deceived, my friend. And I don't say that to insult you. I say that to bless you because you know what? They lied to me also. I believed a lie about John 3, 5 for pretty much all my life until I was 30 years old. And when I was 30 years old, the Lord God called me unto himself. And then it took me another, after I was born again, it took me another almost five years before I understood the gospel of Jesus Christ and obeyed it and became saved. And when I was, I think it was when I was 34 years old, I was actually in prison at the time because I had gone to prison and that's where I learned to be a Christian. And when I was there in prison, I was praying and I was seeking God. And this is a long story and I'll make it very, very short. But I had been seeking God because I was born again. I was filled with the Holy Ghost, but I still wasn't saved yet. And I was teaching people a lie. I was teaching people that all they have to do to become a Christian is accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And I was taught, and I believed at that time, that to be born of water and of the Spirit meant to be born from the water of your mother's womb and then to have the Holy Spirit. Well, there was something wrong, and I knew that I was telling people something wrong. I knew that I didn't know how to tell people what to do to be saved, but I didn't know what it was that I didn't know. I just knew that there was something that I didn't know, and I took that to God. And I asked him to show me what it was that I didn't know, and he did. And it took a few weeks, and towards the end of that few weeks, I was praying one night. I was on my knees praying. And, and I thought I had finished, and I started to get up. And when I started to get up, the Lord specifically told me, get back down on your knees. And so I did that, got back down on my knees. And the Lord told me, the Spirit of the Lord told me in so many words, open up your Bible to John chapter 3, verse 5. He told me that verse specifically. So I said, yes, Lord, and I opened my Bible to John chapter 3, verse 5. And he didn't have to tell me anything else. He just opened my eyes, and I saw it. I saw it. For the first time in my life, I saw it. I was able to read the scripture as it is written with the veil of religiosity taken away from me, with all the presuppositions that I had been filled with from my life of going to church, and reading religious books, and all that stuff. All that was taken away, and God allowed me to just read that sentence as it was written. And I said, I see it, Lord. I see it. And when God opened that up to me, from that point forward, the whole of the Bible opened up to me. Because before that time, I was blinded, and I was blinding myself by continuing in a religious doctrine and teaching things contrary to the Scripture. I couldn't teach what John 3, 5 said, because if I taught what John 3, 5 said, it would contradict the religious doctrines that I had been taught which I thought were Christian doctrines. So I was so entrenched in those things that I could not allow the Word of God to change my opinion about what I thought Christian doctrine was until God opened my eyes and He showed me the truth of His Word. And then I understood that I had been lied to all that time and it was just like throwing a brick through a stained glass window. And all that religious nonsense was shattered away. And from there... God opened up his whole word to me, the whole Bible, and I began to understand the things that I've just explained to you in the last 20 minutes, 19 minutes and a half. Praise the Lord. So what I've shared with you in these last 19 minutes and a half is what took me about five years of seeking God in his word, fasting and praying and asking him questions and getting answers from him in order to discover. So be blessed. Take advantage of these things that I've shared with you that took me years to get from God 
and take these things and look in the scripture and see that I'm telling you the truth. And let all those religious lies that have been taught to you for years be shattered and broken away and never, never be able to put back together again. Pardon me, never be able to be put back together again. Just like a brick through a stained glass window. Shattered, totally destroyed, and there's nothing you can do with it but sweep it up and throw it in the garbage because that's where it belongs. That's where all that religious nonsense that you and I were taught all of our lives belongs. And that brick is the word of God. It is the hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May God bless those of you who love his word. In Jesus' name, amen.